my amazing students. This is Mrs. A and I love math. Today we're looking at lesson 95 in your Saxon Orange book. We're talking about graphs of nonlinear functions and recognizing the shapes of various nonlinear function graphs. So first of all, let's talk about linear functions. We recognize f of x is mx plus b. That's our slope intercept form of the line. And that's called a linear function because it's a line. And here are some examples of linear functions. f of x and g of x and h of x. Know that each one of them each has a one variable x and then a constant in this form. But that's not what we're talking about this lesson. This lesson, we're talking about graphing nonlinear functions. The first nonlinear function that we're going to learn about is the quadratic function. Now, as long as I've been in mathematics, which is a really long time, I still don't know why they call this the quadratic function. Because the characteristic of the quadratic function is that we have an x squared. But we all know that quad means quadrant or fourths. So why did they name this function quad when it really is x squared? I don't know. You'll have to find that information somewhere else because I've never seen why they call it quadratic. But the fact is, is they do call, the, call these quadratics. And all quadratics are of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a cannot be zero. Now, the reason that a cannot be zero is not that you would no longer have a function. It's because you would no longer have a quadratic function. Because a quadratic has to have an x squared term. And if a was zero, you would no longer have an x squared term, and it wouldn't be quadratic. It would be linear. That's another story for another day. So that's why they have a cannot be zero. Parabolas look like this or like this, and they are the shapes that these quadratic functions will have. Now we're going to discuss four quadratic functions. Now this one, I always call this the parent quadratic function. It is the simplest, most basic quadratic function you can have. And all of these other quadratic functions are simply translating horizontally or vertically from this one. Now we're going to graph each one of these and see what happens with each. All right, so here I have put in a in four boxes each one of these quadratic functions that we're going to talk about. f of x is x squared. Now, when we start to graph, we'll have x and y. Now, remember y is the same as f of x, so it's going to be our outcome here. So if x is 0, then 0 squared is 0. So 0, 0 is a point on our graph. If x is 1, then 1 squared is 1, and 1, 1 will be a point on our graph. If x is negative 1, then negative 1 squared would be 1 also. So negative 1, 1 is on our graph. If we use 2, then we get 2 squared, which is 4, and 2 4 is on our graph. If we use negative 2, then we square a negative 2, and we also get a 4, and negative 2, 4 is on our graph, and there is our basic shape. Now this again is our parent quadratic function. It is our most basic one, and all the others will be some sort of a shift or um, translation of this one. Okay, a stretch or a compression, we'll learn a lot about those. So now let's look at this one. X minus 3 and then the parenthesis and squared. Hmm, how is this going to affect our graph? Well, I'm going to tell you what to expect before we graph it. This X minus 3 is going to shift three steps to the right. So one, two, three 
I'm going to put a zero here, and then it's going to be the exact same shape as the one over here, but it's three steps to the right. So right one, up one, left one, up one, and then right two, up four, and then left two, up four, and we have the same basic shape shifted over three steps. Now, I don't want you to take my word for it. Let's plug in a few points. Let's plug in a three, because that's where we said it started. Let's plug in a three. Three take away three, zero. And zero squared is zero. So three, zero is a point, isn't it? Well, let's plug in four. So four minus three is one. One squared is one. So four, one is a point. And plug in a five. Because I said it goes up to four when we get to five. So five minus three is two. And two squared is four. And five, four will be a point. Okay? So you can check the other two points, but they're going to work. Because this parenthesis is saying that it's sliding over three to the right. Because what makes this go to zero is three. And the center of this whole graph will move to three now. All right, so now this one's a little different. It has x squared minus three. There is no parenthesis. This three is going to drop the whole graph three steps down. So let's try it. One, two, three. So it was zero, zero, but now it's going to be negative um, zero, negative three, and over one, up one, and then over two, up four, and then left one, up one, and then left two, up four. Just the same shape. All right, so this one should be this one drop down three steps. Now, let's plug in a few points. If we plug in zero, zero squared is zero, minus three is negative three. So zero, negative three is a point. If we plug in one, then we're going to get one minus three is negative two, and one negative two is a point. So we can see that this whole graph is this graph shifted down three steps. So now this one is interesting because that negative is the only thing that's different between an x squared and a negative x squared, and that is going to be a flipped over graph. It's going to simply, instead of starting here and going up, it's going to start here and go down. It's going to be upside down. All right, now let's check a few points. If I plug in zero for my x, then zero squared is zero, and negative zero is still zero. But if I plug in a one, then one squared is one, and a negative one is a negative one. If I plug in a two, then two squared is four, but a negative four Ah, so zero, zero, one, negative one, two, negative four. And you can see it's the same as this graph, except that it's going upside down. It's a frowny face. This is a smiley face. This is a frowny face. So when we look at all of our quadratics, we have our parent quadratic, y is equal to x squared. We have one that was slid three to the right because in the parentheses we had an x minus three. And then this one was slid three steps down because there was a minus three outside. And then this one was flipped over and became a frowny face. Now, this is our general rule. If we have a parentheses and our function which is our x, is inside the parentheses. If it happens inside, it's going to move it left or right. If it happens outside, we have a minus 3 without a parentheses. It happens outside the function because my x squared is the function here. It happens outside my function, it's going to move it up or down. 
And that is a good rule of thumb for all functions. If it happens inside the function, it's going to move it left or right. If it happens outside the function, it's going to move it up or down. All right, so here we have um, cubic functions, right? So cubic functions are of the form f of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, where a cannot be 0. Now, a can't be 0 because then my x cubed term would leave and it would not be cubic anymore. So here we go with our parent cubic function. f of x is x cubed. It is as simple as we can get it. So let's think about how does this cubic function act. All right, so I'm going to draw a little graph, and I'm going to plug in a few little points, x, y. If x is 0, 0 cubed is still 0, so 0, 0 is a point. If x is 1, then 1 cubed is 1, so 1, 1 is a point. If x is 2, then 2 cubed is 8, and 2, 8, wow, it's way up there, is a point. And our graph does this. Now, what does it do after that? If I plug in a negative 1, then negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1 is a point. Negative 2 negative 8 is a point, and this graph is our basic cubic function, our parent function for the cubics. Now, now that we know what that one looks like, that's our parent. Remember what I just said with quadratics. If it happens inside the function, it's going to move it left or right. This displacement translation is happening inside the function because x is my function, it's where my stuff happens, and the negative 2 is inside with the x because of those parentheses. This one is going to be this function two steps to the right. So we're going to say 2 to the right. That is our prediction. 2 to the right. <clears throat> this one is happening outside the function. The 2 is outside the x cubed. Therefore, this one is going to move down two steps, down two steps. And this one is going to be a reflection because the only difference between this one here and this one here is a negative in the front. So it's a negative 1 times which means that all the y values will be the opposite of these y values. So we're going to have a flip here. Okay, so now let's go and draw each one of those. Now that we've made our little predictions, this one right here, if we went ahead and put in, so I said it moves to right. So instead of starting at 0, let's start at 2. 2, take away 2 is 0. 0 cubed is 0. So 2, 0 is a point. Now let's go to 3. 3 minus 2 is 1, and 1 cubed is 1. So 3, 1 is the point. The same point as that one, shifted over two steps. Okay, so this graph is going to continue this pattern and it's going to look like this. It's going to be this same graph, but shifted two steps to the right. Okay, let's plug in a few points to this one. We said it was going to shift two steps down. Okay, let me put a little bitty graph right there. And let's start at zero. Zero cubed is zero. Take away two is negative two. So 0, negative 2 is a point. Okay, so let's go to 1. 1 cubed is 1. Take away 2 is negative 1. So 1, negative 1 is a point. 
if I plug in a 2. 2 cubed is 8, take away 2 is 6, and 2, 6 is a point. Remember, that was 2, 8. This one is 2, 6. Drop down two spaces. And the whole graph is two steps below the line that this one crossed on. Pretty cool, huh? Now, you're going to get to where you can know exactly how these are going to look also. Okay, this last one is a flip this way, okay? So, this one, I'm going to draw this graph on this one now, but we're going to use a different um, marker here. So, I'm going to graph this one right here. So, we're going to plug in a zero. Zero cubed is zero. Negative zero is still zero. So, it's going to be right there. And then, if I plug in a one, I'm going to get one cubed is one, but then a negative one is negative one. So, one negative one, one negative one. Two. We plug in a two, and we're going to get two cubed is 8, and the negative in front of 8 is negative 8, so 2, negative 8. This graph is going to go like that. It flips. Now, you can see that if I take this and I flip it down, it goes here. If I take this one and flip it up, it goes up there. It's a flip. So now we're doing a function called the square root function. And this is the little square root symbol. And we're going to graph this one first. What does this square root function look like? So let's plug in a few points, a little x, y grid here. If we plug in a 0, the square root of 0 is still 0. Now remember the square root of a number is that number which when you square it will give you the number you started with, okay? So, 0, 0 is part of this function graph. So now I'm going to plug in a 1, and the square root of 1 is still 1. So 1, 1 is part of this function graph. Now I'm going to be easy on myself because I'm basically a little bit lazy and I like to do things the easy way, don't you sometimes? If you can, I'm going to choose a friendly number. I'm going to choose a number that's already a perfect square. I'm going to choose 4 because taking the square root of 4 is easy. That's 2. So 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 is a point on my graph. Now I could keep on going and keep on graphing, but I have four others that I want to graph on here too. So if I threw in a 9, 9, 3 would be on the graph. If I threw in a 25, 25, 5 would be on the graph. So this thing keeps on going way, 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 out to the right. <clears throat> okay, so if that is the way that our square root function goes, it doesn't do anything over here. Let's check. If I take a negative one, well, the square root of a negative one? Hmm. Is there a number that when squared gives me negative one? Not a real number. So we'd say, no, there's nothing over here. It's empty space. It only goes off in one direction. That's what a square root function does. All right, so now look at this. This x plus 2, this plus 2 is happening inside the function because this is the square root function. And all of the action happens in the square root sign. So the square root, the x plus 2 happens inside the function. Therefore, that plus 2 is going to move it left or right. It's going to move it two steps left. Okay, so I'm going to say 2 left. That's my prediction. Okay, now let's check my prediction. Here's our little grid. Okay, so I'm going to start two steps to the left because that's where I think we're going to go. We're going to start at negative 2. And at negative 2, I plug in a negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 
and the square root of zero is zero. So negative two, zero is a point. Now, I can't go to the left of negative two because remember over here was empty space and we've moved this two steps to the left. So this should go just like this, but nothing over here. Let's check, let's plug in a negative three. Negative three plus two is negative one and the square root of negative one, uh-oh, we can't take the square root of negative numbers in the real number system. So this is the graph. Now let's just plug in one more to check, okay? So let's plug in, and that was a negative two, let's plug in a negative one. Negative one plus two is one and the square root of one is one. So there it is. And let's plug in four steps to the right of negative two, because see, we used a four over here. Let's just take negative two plus four, that's two. Two plus two is four, the square root of four is two. So one, two, up two is a point. Pretty cool to be able to predict it like that, huh? All right, so now this one down here, it has got a plus two, it's in the front, that doesn't really matter though. So we have the square root over here, but we have plus two. Okay, so since it happens outside the function, it's gonna move it up or down. Since it's positive, it's gonna move it up. So this is gonna be two steps up. So let's check. Does this move the graph two steps up? All right, so let's plug in a zero. If we plug in a zero, we get the square root of zero is zero, plus two is two, so zero, two. Okay, and then if we plug in a one, one, square root of one is one plus three, two is three, so one, three. And then let's plug in, since we used a four over here for a nice friendly number, four, square root four is two, two plus two is four. So one, two, let's see, one, two, three, four, up four. So that was two, three, four, up four. About there. So it's the same graph as this one. Moved two steps up. And then lastly, now let's think back to the last two things we did. We did quadratics and we did cubics. And when we had a negative on the front, it flipped it upside down. Guess what it's gonna do this time? It's gonna flip it upside down. We're gonna talk about a flip. So let's just draw the flip. We started this way. So if we flipped it down, shouldn't it go like that? And that's exactly what it does. Let's try it. If we plug in a zero, we get a zero. Square root of zero is zero, and then a negative zero is still zero. If we plug in a one, we get a square root of one is one, and then the opposite of one is negative one, so one, negative one. And we plug in our friendly four, we get two, but then the opposite of two is negative two, so four, negative two, and it looks just like we thought it would. It's just flipped. All right, so here we have the absolute value functions. And guess what? They're going to do the same things as far as the translations to the functions. This is our absolute value function. And these two little lines here mean that we're going to take the positive of whatever is inside. So here, we'll make a little grid. And we're going to plug in zero, and the positive of zero is zero. So zero, zero is on the graph. Now, absolute value really can be interpreted as the distance from a number to zero, okay? So if we plug in a one, then the distance from one to zero is still one, and so one, one. If we plug in a negative one, the distance from negative one to zero is still one. 
so we would get a positive there. And if we plug in a 2, the distance from 2 to 0 is 2 steps. And if we plug in a negative 2, the distance from negative 2 to 0 is 2 steps. So our absolute value functions will always look like a V-shape, like that, okay, a V-shape. So um, this one is our parent function for the absolute value. Now this x minus 2 happens inside the function. Since it happens inside the function, it's going to move this parent function to the left or the right. Now, based on what we've already talked about, which way do you think it's going to go? That's right, it's going to go two steps to the right. The reason it's going to go to two steps to the right is because what makes this zero is a positive two. This one, since the two happens outside the function, is going to be two steps up. And this one again is going to be a flip. So let's graph each one of those on a very small graph. Two steps to the right from here will be there, a little V-shape. Two steps up, if this is zero, zero, we'd have to start two steps up and have our little V-shape going from there. And then this one is going to be a flip and it's going to be a V-shape, but it's going to be going down like that one. Now, the more you play with these, the more fun you're going to have with these shapes because they're very consistent once you learn how to do them. So, let's just check. If I plug in a 2, don't I get out a 0? That's the starting point, isn't it? Okay, if I plug in a 0, don't I get out a 2? I do, don't I? And this one's going to flip down because if I plug in a 1, I get a 1, but then I take the opposite of the 1 and I get a negative 1. Now, I want you to practice with these so that you get to be a good predictor of which way they're going to go before you start to plug in the points. All right, so now let's look at your book. It says, in the examples below, we shall practice the skill of recognizing and sketching the basic shapes of various types of elementary functions. So here they give us four functions. It says, the graph of a quadratic function could resemble which of the following graphs? Now, there's some of these things that you have not had yet. So, but have had the quadratic function. Remember, quadratics are parabolas and they look like horseshoes, either faced up or down. So the answer is this one. It is a horseshoe facing down. The only graph depicted in B looks like the one of the graphs shown as in the example of the graph of the quadratic function. Okay, so it is B and only B. Now this is your linear function. This looks like a cubic function. And this, you have not had that one yet, but that looks like a um, much higher degreed function. That would probably be something like x to the sixth power. So we're not worried about that one right now. That one's way higher than any of those you've studied. So just don't worry about it. It was thrown in as a kink in the monkey works. In this next portion, it says, given the equations of the following functions, identify the function whose graph most resembles the specified shape shown. Okay, so these are all shapes that we've had. This one right here is a quadratic function. Now remember, the quadratic has an x squared in it. So, this quadratic should match this function. So, L of X goes to A. This one, remember, cubics have a little squiggle in the middle. 
and cubics are x cubed functions. So these two go together. This is a V shape. V shapes are absolute value shapes. So these two go together. And this, remember how square roots go off in one direction? That is a flipped over square root, negative, flips it over, and that's the square root function. Okay, so it shows you those and how they're matched up there. Okay, look at the next one. It says, shown below are the shapes of the graphs of various functions. Now, quadratic, upside down, cubic, upside down, absolute value, square root. I want you to know these shapes. Now, match each of the following functions to one of the graphs below. That's a cubic. That's a cubic. Those go together. Negative x squared is going to be a frowny face because it's flipped over quadratic. A and G match. This is a square root. The square root function is going to look like that. This one is an absolute value. Absolute values look like a V shape. So here they give your answers to show how they're matched up. I want you to get to be as fast as I am on recognizing what they are. Okay, so here are your practices. So we have practice A. It's giving some functions and some graphs. The first function is quadratic because it has an x squared. Remember, x squareds are horseshoes. Okay, so f of x goes to number 4. g of x is an absolute value. Absolute value flipped over. Absolute values are v's. So g of x goes to 3. This is a cubic. x cubed is a cubic. Cubics have a squiggle in the middle. h of x goes to 2 k of x is a square root. Square roots go off in one direction. k of x goes to 1. Okay, let's look at practice B down here. It says shown below are four shapes. Okay, now, looking at the shapes, quadratic is a horseshoe. It's an x squared. This goes off in one direction. This is a square root. This is a V shape. That's an absolute value. This one is cubic because it has a little squiggle in the middle. Match to each shape the function defined below whose graph most closely resembles. Absolute value is a V shape, so f of x goes with 3. Negative x cubed. x cubes have a squiggle in the middle. The square root of x goes off in one direction. h of x goes to 2. k is a square on the end. That's a quadratic. It's an upside down horseshoe because the negative in the front makes it upside down. I hope you have learned a lot about the shapes of nonlinear functions. And this is Mrs. A, and may God bless your day.